Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Terminator Genesis. It's the fifth installment in the Terminator franchise. Yep, so far we had the original 1984 classic, The Terminator. We have its following sequel, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which happens to be a much better sequel we had a third installment called Rise of the Machines which is definitely not as good as the first two films there's no doubt about it but it is a decent and worth watching sequel I'll give you that and then we finally had the fourth installment which was Salvation yeah which is a movie where this time it's set a war during Skynet between between the humans and the machines. But now we have the fifth installment, which is of course Genesis. And sadly, it's the worst of the series. I'm I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. Because considering that the third and fourth films have been getting some backlash from its fan base and everything. Suddenly the fifth movie gets its credit it deserves, which I really don't understand. I really don't. Because after watching this now, I could tell you that the third and fourth movies were way better. And I'd rather watch the first two films over this any day. Trust me. I mean, hell, we even got the TV series as well, which was the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which I actually enjoyed when they aired on Fox. This one is just, well, basically, here it goes. It's a movie about what was it like if you give it a second chance. So, yeah, that's pretty much what the movie's about, giving a second chance. Where this time, Kyle Reese, who now works with Sarah Connor, who basically was a supposed to protect her, now works together with... Terminator T-800 to stop Skynet from coming so that means this time it's not gonna happen anymore so everything is gonna be set the way it's supposed to be yeah that's right Oy. well well I'm gonna get right to it the movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger who's now back as a Terminator with Jason Clark, or Amelia Clark, which I know she's from the TV series Games of Thrones, Jai Courtney, Lee Byung Hung, J.K. Simmons, Matt Smith, Courtney B. Vance, Michael Gladys, Sandrine Holt, and Gregory Allen Williams. And it's directed by Alan Taylor, the same director that gave us for The Dark World. The movie begins set on Judgment Day in 1997. Skynet, an artificial general intelligence system, has seek out by using nuclear missiles to destroy the entire human race. But then after Judgment Day, we discovered a young Cal Reese, who is being saved by human resistance leader John Connor, who is now played by Jason Clarke. By the year 2029, in Los Angeles, before the resistance had rinsed the offensive, Skynet had activated a time machine to send back a Terminator T-800 to 1984 just to kill John's mother, Sarah Connor, who of course was now played by Amelia Clark. So Kyle Reese, who's now played by Jai Courtney, is now his right hand man and he volunteers to travel back in time just to protect Sarah. But as Kyle floats into the machine's magnetic field, he witnessed that John is being attacked by another resistance soldier and he started having visions from his childhood about the events that occurred in 2017, especially on his uh, birthday when he receives a tablet that has a countdown called Genesis which is a global operating system that's being embraced by the public. Yeah. So 
Upon his arrival, we then discovered that the Terminator T-800, as we speak, because we saw this scene in the original 1984 film, where the Terminator, already naked, has, <laughs> has uh, discovered all three punks that were outside of the Griffin Observatory, you know, using the telescope, you know, while, you know, smashing and, you know, drinking some, some liquor and everything. Yeah. The Terminator decided to offer them to borrow their clothes, but they refused by actually uh, sticking a knife at his face. <laughs> Until all of a sudden, a reprogrammed T-800, who is now simply known as the Guardian, who is played by Arnold Schwarzenegger once again, had decided to destroy the Terminator T-800. Yeah, which this is where he says, you don't need any clothes. I've been waiting for you. So yet they started beating the shit out of each other. Till all of a sudden, Sarah Connor had used a powerful sniper to destroy the Terminator T-800 by one shot almost right beneath the chest. Yeah, right close to it. So then it stops. So anyway, yeah, that's where we see uh, the Guardian actually giving her a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, Cod had finally arrived um, during the short time into the alley where he actually steals some clothes from a bum, at this rate, his pants, already being chased by cops, including a cop that turns out to be, as we speak, the T 1000 that's now played by a Korean actor, um, Lee Young Hung. Yeah. So then, suddenly, Sarah and the Guardian had joined Kyle and destroyed the T-1000 by using acid. And then, suddenly, they revealed that they constructed a makeshift time machine that's similar to the ones they used at Skynet. And they actually were planning on traveling back in time to 1997, which Skynet had appeared to destroy the whole human race. But Kyle, of course, only found out that the timeline has been altered, so things have changed suddenly for the better. Because it turns out that you know Sarah has been with the Guardian since she was nine years old. So that basically, the Guardian is actually her father figure. Yeah, because she always keeps calling her pops. Yeah, wow. Well, anyway. They convinced that the future has changed due to a warning that he received in his childhood vision. So he persuades Sarah to travel to 2017 instead to stop Skynet. So once they arrived in San Francisco in 2017 on a busy highway, they are being apprehended by the city police where we then discovered Detective O'Brien who is now played by J.K. Simmons. You know, already being treated for injuries but then they begin to find out the real truth behind Genesis that its global operated system is actually Skynet so all of a sudden John Connor had arrived and rescued Sarah and Kyle just to escape until the Guardian had appeared and shot him only to reveal that John is actually being advanced by the T-3000 Terminator yeah, by Skynet so at this point it attacked John and transformed into the Terminator with John actually um, joining in the attack force with the Cyberdyne system survival and travels back in time to assist him with the development of Genesis <laughs> so then Sarah, Kyle and the Guardian wants up inside a safe house filled with tons of machine guns and all this other stuff that they have in store just to stop them. Only to, to make their final preparations to destroy the Cyberdyne Genesis mainframe. Which they use towards the Cyberdyne headquarters with the T-3000 in close pursuit. So they went all the way trying to go to, to a chase. Where they actually tried to escape John by actually going all the way straight to the San Francisco Bridge. Yeah, where they actually drove off a school bus, which then John actually went under underneath the school bus and destroyed all the parts and, and causes this bus to flip over 
all the way into uh, <laughs> to the ocean when when the guardians Sarah and Kyle had escaped from them yet the whole bus fell down and of course they all got arrested well then we get to see <laughs> a scene uh, where where you get to hear the song bad boys while well, they they got arrested and and I know you saw uh, <laughs> the Terminator actually smiling awkwardly oh wow so then they tried to escape from the police facility into an airborne chase by going inside the police helicopters while John wants to go into the other one and, and they were chasing them around with the Guardian destroying you know his helicopter by dive bombing it and then they finally went inside the Cyberdyne complex which counts down to, to 15, 13 hours to 15 you know, trying to destroy all these hologram images of Skynet, you know, going from there to there, going from one side to the other. And they had the Guardian with the rest of them just trying to destroy John from attacking the system. And once they did, yeah, the Guardian is finally in full form <laughs> with using the liquid metal because he actually saved their lives and that's what leads to a happy ending where where the trio finally travels into Kyle's childhood home where Kyle gets to see his younger self to actually reveal the real truth behind Genesis and then the whole thing will be over so now they can start their own lives together by in the year 2017 and of course the movie ends I'm sorry but I just didn't like the sequel at all. I mean, it, it had an interesting idea about what was it like if you actually given a second chance to actually save the entire world from being wiped out by machines. And it's just wasn't very well done as it seems. It's it was poorly written. It had a it it just seemed like they're trying to destroy everything that the first two films had because it was so much better plus this movie had a lot of miscasting lots of shitty dialogue that they put in they put some wrong choices of music they even played a song the uh, Ramones I want to be sedated come on you're actually playing a song that came out from 1988 in 1984 although I know they played it once they arrived in 2017 when they used the, the boombox I don't know it just doesn't make any sense to me. In fact, none of this movie almost made any sense. I don't know. Um, I, I thought Jack Courtney was terrible once again. You know, in so many movies he's been in, you know, this had to be his worst. I, mean, I, I didn't like him in The Good Day to Die Hard when he played uh, John McClane's son. Yeah, I thought he was just trying to be macho and tough. And he's just comes across as a huge bore and very mean to John you know like like if John McClane is acts like a fucking kid I don't know but in this movie though he's just a fucking stiff that's all it is he's he's a boring tired stiff I don't like his voice in this one he just doesn't have the appeal that uh, Michael Bean had in the original 1984 film that's true because he was so much better than him. I mean, why is Jai Courtney getting any work these days? You know, you know, no matter what film he's been in, he hasn't been this good. I mean, I never saw Spartacus, the TV series, so why would I care? Amelia Clark is even worse. I didn't think she was the right choice to play Sarah Connor. She looks like a young 16 year old teenager who goes around being tough as it is you know instead of being a damsel in distress <sighs> I'm getting tired of that particular cliche because okay we get the point we want to see Sarah Connor be as tough as ever before considering how young she is I don't know I just really don't buy that I really don't 
And the sad part is a Korean actor playing the T-1000. I mean, come on. He is no Robert Patrick. I mean, Robert Patrick did a good job when he played that role. This guy, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. And Jason Clark, you know, Amelia's brother, turns out to be particularly a boring version of John Connor that I've ever saw. I'm sorry, but I would take Edward Furlong, Nick Stahl, and as far as I could deal with, I'll take Christian Bell any day over Jason Clark's performance. Yeah, I mean, you basically just get John Connor getting all these scars on his face, and <laughs> because due, due to the attacks that he's been going through, until he winds up being taken over by the Terminator T-3000 over his body. So now he can actually do whatever he wants. Gets to change his face back to normal and everything. I don't know. Yeah. The action scenes in the film was not memorable. Not at all. I mean, everything from the school bus to all this other crap that we saw in the first half of the movie. I didn't find anything entertaining as we speak. Uh, the fights were lame, the jokes were awful, I didn't like all the dialogue that's been given from Schwarzenegger himself, especially when he started saying, old, but not obsolete. I mean, come on, man, seriously? Is that what they had to give him? What, what happened to, um, Ocelobista, baby? And all these other lines that I grew up with. Of course, we still hear the I'll be back. Line from the original film. I don't know. But on the other hand, Schwarzenegger was the only good thing about the movie, at least, considering how old he looks. You know, he's still the right choice to play the Terminator, no matter what. Whenever it's good or bad, you know, this is the Terminator we already know. I don't know. It seems like I'm watching a generic version of the Terminator. All done in a different way. With a cast that just can't act. Um, lots of CGI that's been overdone. Lots of action scenes that are not memorable. I mean, it had a huge budget. I couldn't believe that. And... And the fact that they're trying to make it into an alternate timeline just doesn't work. It could have done so much better if it wasn't poorly written. I don't know. This was just, without a doubt, the worst Terminator film I've ever saw. And I've seen worse action movies out there. So, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. So, with that aside, if you love the Terminator movies... I know I have, especially the TV series. Don't bother with this one. It's not worth it. I mean, I, I can't believe James Cameron actually refers this as the, the real third movie of Terminator. Yeah, right. God, I, I'm getting sick and tired of the backlash that the third and fourth movies were. I'm sorry, but I think I'd rather watch those instead. You know. So yeah. Why bother with this one? It just sucks. So anyway, I give Terminator Genesis with a Y instead of an I a disappointing one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.